To state that the situation presented by the resistance to the 1954 decision of the United States Supreme Court in the public school segregation cases is fully as grave as any which have come under the scrutiny and study of the Commonwealth Club. Little Rock brought the desegregation crisis sharply to the attention of the American people and the world. Here at home, it awakened many citizens for the first time to the ugly realities of a challenge to the very unity of our nation. Abroad dealt a stab in the back to American prestige as a leader of the free world and presented our totalitarian enemies with made-to-order propaganda for the use among the very nations and people we need and must have on the side of democracy. The world cannot understand nor long respect a nation in which a governor calls out troops to bar little children from school in defiance of the Supreme Court of the land. A nation in which mobs beat and kick and stone and spit upon those who happen not to be white. It asks, is this vaunted democracy? Is this freedom, human dignity and equality of opportunity? Is this fair play? Is this better than communism? No. The assertion that Little Rock has damaged American abroad does not call for sneers. Our national security might well hang in the balance. The Negro citizens of our common country, a country they have sweat to build and died to defend, are determined that the verdict of Apotomox will not be renounced, that the clock will not be turned back, that they shall enjoy what is justly theirs. Their little children, begotten of parents of faith and courage, have shown by their fearlessness and their dignity that a people will not be denied their heritage. Complex as the problem is and hostile as the climate of opinion may be in certain areas, Negro Americans are determined to press for not only a beginning, but a middle and a final solution in good faith and with American democratic speed. The Negro position is clear. Three years of intimidation to the meanest and most brutal of levels have not broken the ranks or shaken their conviction. What of the rest of our nation? It must make a decision for morality and legality and move in support of it, not merely for the good of the Negroes, but for the destiny of the nation itself. Already I've indicated that this is a new and dangerous world. This Cold War is a test of survival for the West. The Soviet Sputnik, now silent and barely visible, casts a shadow not lightly to be brushed aside. Can we meet the challenge Moscow and the sciences and in war with a country divided upon race and color? Can we afford to deny to any boy or girl the maximum of education? That education which means the difference between democratic life and a totalitarian death. To deny our ability to achieve a just solution within the framework of our Declaration of Independence and our Bill of Rights is a de to deny the genius of America. To reject our moral precepts is to renounce our partnership with God in bringing the kingdom of righteousness into being here on earth. We may falter and stumble, but we cannot fail.